Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles. And today I wanted to share with all of you how I got into the subject of foraging. And I also want to share with you guys some of my trials and tribulations throughout the multiples of years that I have been foraging. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now I first started foraging back in 2008. That was over 10 years ago. Throughout those 10 years, I've learned a lot of things. Some of those things I've shared with you guys on this channel, some of them I have not. Some of the things that I haven't shared with you guys have just been because I haven't had a way to film them accordingly and to actually show exactly what I have learned or have not learned yet. Throughout all those years, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've learned a lot about different plants that I didn't know that I could eat. I've learned different ways to use those plants for food and medicine. I've also helped a lot of people along the way within my family and some of you guys who have viewed my channel and even some of those who I've done classes for as well. Foraging to me is a very important part of our lives, our history, and our culture. Foraging wild foods goes back thousands of years. If it was not for wild foods, we would not have modern agriculture because every plant you buy in the grocery store at one point in time came from a wild plant. Now back in 2008, whenever I very first started foraging, I only had one book. That was the Peterson Field Guide to Wild Plants of Eastern and Central North America. And it's a pretty decent book but it has a lot of gaps. It's a lot of copy and paste information, and it could definitely be way better written. That being said, it helped me grow a little bit as a forager. And it's because of that plant book that I started learning more about all of the wonders around me when it comes to wild plants for food and for medicine. Now, back in those times in 2008, I was a very poor person. I still am poor, but I'm okay with that. I did not have a lot of money. I only had that one book and I had a flip phone at my disposal. Smartphones were just coming out and they were just starting to become popular. I didn't have a computer. I didn't have access to the internet at that time. Thankfully now that's a little bit better for most people than it was 10, 11 years ago. As I continued to study the subject of wild plants for food and medicine, I only grew in knowledge. I learned that there's way more plants around me for food and medicine than I ever realized. Now before 2008, I'd already spent a lot of time outside hiking, collecting rocks especially, because I love rocks, I love geology. It's a really big thing for me. I love natural history going back thousands if not millions of years in the case of geology. I also have a very big respect and a lot of attention in my life has been paid to the history of Native Americans or the first Americans. And I learned through that studying and through that research that Native Americans used and subsisted off of wild plants. A whole lot more than they ever did domesticated crops. Yes, they grew their corn, their beans, their squash. They grew a couple of other things as well, but mainly it was wild plants that was keeping them alive throughout the years. That made me stop and realize that, hey, if they have all of this stuff available, why is it not available now? So I started looking at the plants. I started researching through my book that I had, that one book led to what would eventually become my knowledge, my business, and this YouTube channel that you guys are now watching. So as I started paying attention to the plants around me and I wanted to learn more, I bought another book and that was the Peterson Field Guide to Medicinal Plants of Eastern and Central North America. Once I had gotten that book, I had realized that there are a lot more plants available that have multiple uses. And most of the plants that are edible are also medicinal. That was a very good learning process for me to go through. And it was very important to learning this subject. After I'd gotten the Peterson Field Guide to Medicinal Plants, 
I started to realize that a lot of these plants that are medicinal are growing right in my yard. They're also out in the woods where I frequent a lot. So if I'm out in the woods all the time, why can't I use some of these plants for food and medicine? So I started to dabble in gathering them and collecting them for food and medicine slowly over a period of the, over the next couple of years. Now, as I did that, I started learning each plant individually. I started with one plant, then moved up to two, then moved up to three, so on and so forth, etc., etc. Throughout that time, a period of about three to four years from 2008 all the way to 2012, I'd realized how many things that I was walking right by that I could use for food and medicine. So then that only increased or piqued my curiosity even more. It went from a curiosity and a side hobby to something that I figured I was going to want to do more of. Now fast forward to 2012, which was definitely by far one of the worst years of my life thus far. In 2012, we had a polar vortex winter. And the place I had lived at the time was very corrupt and very shady, and we were forced to move out due to eviction. But whenever we moved into the new place, I was much closer to a state forest that I loved to frequent. I was constantly gathering plants and mushrooms in this state forest, legally of course, but I was gathering plants and mushrooms and even berries there all the time. I spent hours hiking. Now once the polar vortex winter of 2012 and 2013 ended, I found myself in a big predicament. Money was extremely tight because of an unexpected move and there was two of us. So there was basically either enough money to pay bills and not eat or eat and not pay bills. I asked myself why I should be forced to live with such circumstances. So what did I decide to do? I decided having a garden plus foraging would be a really good way to make both ends meet. So that way the money could go to bills and food could still be put into our bellies. Then in the year of 2013, I had spent over 40 hours a week hiking in the woods by myself. In 2013, I alone had covered over 1,200 miles, foraging, learning about plants, going out and about, tasting several plants that I haven't tasted before. Now from 2008 to 2012, I had already spent a good amount of time foraging and collecting small amounts of plants and tasting some and learning how they're to be used, how they work, how they taste, but nothing like what I was prepared for in 2013. In 2013, I had gathered over 100 different plants for food and for medicine. I had started learning how to make tinctures, how to make balms, how to make salves. I had started learning how to use roots, how to use specific plants for specific uses. And that was out of pure necessity. Granted, I wanted to, I loved learning about it, but it was also mainly out of necessity. Then in 2014, I had increased my mileage from 1,200 to 1,400 miles in one year. And throughout those 1,400 miles, I had tasted even more plants. I had gained an even finer knowledge. I was out there gathering plants for food and medicine and cooking them up in the wild while I was out hiking and foraging to help feed me and the person I live with. Now, as many of you may know, and some of you may not know, I started my channel in 2015. So within Two years, from 2013 to 2015, I had gained the bulk of my knowledge, but it was out of necessity. 
It's not that I didn't want to learn the subject. It's not that I didn't care about the subject. Throughout those years, I was forced to learn the subject at a rapid rate. I'm still learning. I will always learn. But throughout all of the years of foraging and learning about nature in all of its various forms, whether it be from hunting to tracking to foraging to making medicine to skinning to tan hide tanning and things of that nature, geology, collecting rocks, learning how to use rocks for paints and learn how to find clay and to process clay and how to make shelters and primitive survival, I also decided to learn about plants and was also forced to learn about plants. Primitive survival is great, but primitive survival doesn't really just focus on making a shelter. It focuses on food. Because without food and calories to sustain you, you're not going to be able to have the energy required to make a shelter or to live for a long period of time. Wild plants and wild game can give us that sustenance. And it is a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it in the end because we gain a closer knowledge of ourselves and a deeper connection with nature, which is extremely important in this technological era that we now live. Throughout all of my years of foraging, there's been one important thing that I've learned. Yes, I've learned about plants for food and medicine. I've learned how to make myself healthier. I've learned how to provide sustenance from the wild. I've learned how to make shelter, collect water, collect resources, things like that. Those are important. But I've learned more about myself by simply being outside. Being outside and collecting plants is one of the greatest gifts that we could ever be given. And then since I started my channel and my business of teaching people, running classes about foraging, running my YouTube channel and running my website, I've learned a lot more. I've learned plenty of things from you guys in the comments. I learn a lot from you guys in the comments, so we can share these things and share these ideas and share these experiences with each other. That's a very valuable asset. So while modern technology takes us away from nature, it can also bring us closer to nature. And we need to fuse those things together so that way we can create a more complete and positive future for our future generations. Throughout the past couple of years, I have done several classes with a lot of people. That's very nice. So I've been able to teach people privately. I've taught a lot of people, over a million people, through my YouTube channel. And it's because of viewers like you that help keep this going. That help keep sharing the knowledge that you guys have. And I can also share my knowledge with you that I gained through my trials and my tribulations. I do want to apologize for any shakiness. It is 30 degrees outside and I can't really hold my camera with gloves on. So I'm barehanded, so my hands are getting very cold because it's about 30 degrees. This is the very first snowfall that we've had here in Indiana, in my area in Indiana anyways, this whole year. But throughout all those trials and tribulations, I've learned the information that I'm able to share with all of you on YouTube for free. And that's a really awesome thing to have for all of us. So, I hope you guys have learned a little bit more about me through this, and I hope you guys have learned a little bit more on how you can learn this subject. I thank all of you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.